best entertainment on the earth. Tune in for Comics with Perch. Hey everybody, this is Perch. I came across this article on uh, CBR and I think it it actually is, uh, it's coming along to my uh, <laughs> my, my way of thinking. Um, in a weird way, we're meeting in the middle. So the article is Marvel can't just introduce queer characters, it has to use them too. And that is, uh, if, if you've heard on this channel, that's been one of the topics that you don't get brownie points. I mean, you, you can try, but you don't get, uh, you know, <laughs> value from introducing these characters in three pages in an anthology and then promptly burying them. And that is exactly what happens. So as much as a number of current comic creators like to run around talking about how they're, you know, introducing all of these LGBTQ concepts and there's a lot of noise about it, none of them stick. None of them have ongoing titles. None of them are actually meaningful. They show up, they get to be part of the Pride Anthology. Whenever people start to poke Marvel about uh, being not inclusive enough, they trot out another backup story featuring one of these characters. Or they take a main character and, and reveal that they're gay and then promptly forget about them right after. That's the, the pattern. And so there's a number of, of course, YouTubers out there and, and people who do commentary on this that talk about how woke agendas and everything else are coming into Marvel and DC and all these characters keep happening. But take a step backward for a moment and you notice that it, certainly a lot of these topics keep getting tried, but none of them are sticking at all. And so I, I read through this article and it, it dawned on me a very just obvious point. But it talks about the uh, Somnus's absence in the wake of his dramatic debut reflects a long-standing problem with Marvel Comics' representation of the LGBTQ plus community. And uh, let me just read this to you. It says, in Marvel Voices Pride, number one, the story Man of His Dreams by Steve Orlando introduces Somnus, a closeted gay mutant who had a short-lived relationship with Wolverine's son, Dakin, during the 60s. Although Somnus would go on to live the rest of his natural life without coming out of the closet, a reformed and remorseful Dakin brought his former lover's body to Krakoa, used the mutant nation's unique reservation protocols to revive Somnus in a younger body, giving him a second chance to live his life as an openly gay man. And, uh, and then it talks about uh, it, was, it was treated with an impressive level of fanfare, this introduction, which is not true at all. It was a story in Pride the one-shot anthology series that sells terribly for Marvel. And uh, the, uh, the kind of in a ghoulish way, they were promoting this book as, we're going to introduce a new gay character. And it, it just, it, it was it, 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 terrible in the sense of, you know, it, it, it felt like a gimmick. It didn't feel like a character. It felt like, uh, look, what, look what we're doing. And then the article is correct, though. The character disappeared. Now, Somnus, I believe, is appearing in Steve Orlando's Marauders uh, here in a bit. So I think he'll he'll come back. But anyway, the article continues. While Marvel has introduced a staggering number of LGBTQ plus characters into its universe, many of them have all but vanished after they debuts, with only a few going on to become major recurring characters. Not only is this a major fa failing in terms of visibility of queer characters within Marvel, but many of these characters are engaging in ways that weren't relating related to their sexuality or gender identity, and bringing them back could open up opportunities for new and exciting stories that reflect the diversity of the Marvel Universe. Um, in other words, some of the characters that were introduced or some of the characters that uh, had a kind of a, a, a background and a history before uh, they, were, they became LGBTQ plus uh, representation characters, um, the reveal that they are now queer uh, seem to eliminate a lot of actually what they what they do. They just they become only about that and nothing nothing but that. So like Iceman, Iceman used to have adventures and history and villains and now nothing. It's it's just the fact that he's queer. That's all we that's all they can do. So um, they, they the article goes on saying again this 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 is I don't think the people at CBR are my best friend, but they're saying the same things I'm saying. Maybe they're listening to the channel it's catching on. But anyway, it says in many ways, Marvel was ahead of the curve and they were, and so was DC uh, when it came to uh, queer representation in mainstream comics. And I wish, by the way, people like CBR would remember that because they like to trot out articles about how horrifying the 70s, 80s, and 90s were. And, uh, you know, it was a bunch of, you know, white dudes that, that preference straight characters and that's all there was. But that's not true. Comics were, were far ahead of other mediums where this is concerned. Um, 
It says, while positive representation within other major comic book publishers was almost non-existent outside of Vertigo, which is absolutely not true, but okay, Marvel began to actively introduce characters who are of non-traditional sexual orientation and gender identities into their mainline series, with characters like North Star being recognized by most comic historians as one of the first queer characters to appear in comics. Well, in Marvel, yes, but you know this, this writer is revealing that he really didn't you know, read anything outside of Marvel. So that's uh, that's a different problem. Anyway, uh, it, it goes on about uh, you know Kitty Pride has come out and embraced their gender and sexual diversity. Really, Kitty Pride uh, got drunk and had a kiss at the uh, tattoo parlor. I don't know if there's I don't know what a, what is that the definition of embraced. They really haven't referred to it since. But okay, why not? Um, they say that uh, characters like America Chavez, Hulkling, and Wiccan have gone on to become prominent figures within the superhero community, except they really haven't. That's kind of the point. We, you can say that, but uh, here, quick, how many uh, how many books are Hulkling and Wiccan currently starring in? Can you, can you guess? It's zero. They, uh, they're, they're guest starring for a couple panels in Reckoning War, where they're kind of uh, show up to help uh, with overall you know the the alliance is being formed there america chavez does pop up more frequently but not you know they they can't sustain any kind of ongoing title uh hulkling and wicking wiccan got a brief uh, marvel infinity or marvel unlimited uh book um that that a story sorry not even a comic just just a brief kind of four-part story as i recall so anyway it, it goes on and it talks it, it then ultimately starts to tie into uh to other things um the disney bill and, and so on um, they talked about, uh, you know, one of the, one of the most prominent examples of this trend of disappearing is Jesse Drake, a shape-shifting mutant in Marvel's first openly transgender character who all but vanished after a debut in Marvel Comics Presents number 150, in which he was rescued by an abusive research facility by Wolverine and Typhoon Typhoid Mary. Fine. Um, but, the, but the point here is that, yeah, uh, there's a lot of noise about, Everything that Marvel is doing to include diversity, they're proud of diversity. A lot of the writers talk all over and over and over about diversity. We need uh, queer, black and brown editors, etc., and all that going on. But it doesn't stick anywhere. And here comes this 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 ugly truth that it's time to face. All right, there's been a lot of of really classic stories we remember uh, from a number of writers in the past that had LGBTQ representation dating back again to the, you know, eighties, nineties, in some cases, uh, we're talking about people <clears throat> certainly like uh, what Nancy Collins did in Swamp Thing, what Grant Morrison did in a number of books, Peter Milligan, uh, certainly through, through Vertigo, Peter David, uh, with X Factor, uh, went, went and, and covered a lot of these topics here. Um, there's been, <laughs> there's been a lot of really great stories that people remember. Tim Daniel was another one. Um, there's, there's been, uh, well, hell, I mean, even Batwoman, uh, with, uh, you know, Rucka and Williams and, and others have, have done some stories there. There's been a number of really great, uh, characters that were established. Uh, everything was done with, uh, the authority with Midnighter and Apollo, um, you know, once upon a time, uh, the, these are all, kind of key, key stories. Um, the other one, of course, from the interview we did, Rachel Pollock on Doom Patrol um, created a, a great story and, and had great representation of these characters. Today, um, the representation is very shallow. People come in, they're usually, as I mentioned, all those writers I mentioned, Milligan and, and Morrison and Daniel and David, uh, Pollock, um, all these, these one, one common thread with all these writers is they wrote actual detailed storylines. They, the characters did not become one note, become nothing but their sexuality. They actually had depth. There was complexity. Uh, look at what Nancy Collins did for part of her run in, in Swamp Thing. These characters were well-rounded. They, they were defined by many things, not just one trait. They were well-written characters and they survived the path, the test of time today. That is not the case. And, and so I think the, the obvious truth here, today's writers are just not good at this. They're not skilled at it. Many, and so I'm sure some are, but many of them have kind of one trick up their sleeve, which is let's do a story. Let's uh, have them eat dinner and, and talk about, you know, 
the, a relationship, every scene that comes out is the character shows up, character talks about the relationship, character has dinner, character talks about the relationship some more. They don't have any real personality beyond that. Uh, several weeks ago, I read a letter from somebody who wrote into the, the channel talking about that they like a lesbian character who was like a, like, like Spider-Man who just had adventures. And by the way, they were, they were queer. And that was just, that was something they touched on every now and then. And they made the point. It was such a good point of Peter Parker, Spider-Man. There isn't, you know, Mary Jane doesn't show up in every comic to constantly remind Peter and the reader that he's straight. There, there's not these, every now and then Mary Jane will show up. He will go several issues fighting Craven, fighting the Sinister Sticks, fighting whatever. And they don't touch on any part of his sexuality at all. He just has adventures. And that's, that's what a lot of people are craving. And if you look at what Milligan did, what um, Pollock did, what uh, Morrison did, uh, all the, I mean, Mark Millar, when he was on the authority, Warren Ellis, when he was on the, I mean, they, they had adventures and yes, the characters were queer and they would every now and then touch upon that. And it was nor it was part of their normal life. You, you know, look at characters like Midnight or an Apollo. You, you, you're not, no one would ever accuse that, that writing or those characters of hiding their sexuality. It was completely, you know, upfront and out. In Peter David's X Factor, uh, Richter and Shatterstar, they didn't they didn't hide that relationship. It was it was kind of front and center, but they also had adventures, and they didn't constantly constantly uh, have every scene be about you know, their sexuality. And and the obvious conclusion is the writers today just do not have the skills, do not have the ability to actually carry it out. Like they, like they say, so then people make a lot of noise on social media. They'll go on and on and on about, look, I've got a, I've got a, I've got more queer characters on the team than straight characters. Isn't I shouldn't people be proud of me? No. If, if the comic is getting canceled after a couple issues, if the sales are in the toilet, if no lasting memories are made, no, you're actually not doing anything from representation. You're just, you're just checking boxes. And I think uh, it, I, I'm, I'm very irritated by the constant revisionist history of some of these great writers, some of these great comics in the past that happened to have representation, good representation, but didn't constantly rub your nose at it. They simply told good stories. Peter David was not out there giving interviews talking about on CNN, uh, talking about how every single comic he, he writes, he, he finds a way to make a character gay like Tom Taylor has. Um, you didn't see Peter Milligan or Grant Morrison going on and on bragging about the the statistics of their teams and and how much uh, how much queer representation were in their teams, like Avita Ayala does. Those are the, those writers in the past were really good writers who trailblaze. They are the giants in which people stand on the shoulders of, who created amazing stories, amazing worlds, and brought representation into comics and and gave us a, a plenty diverse world that a lot of people enjoyed. Back in the 80s and the 90s, some cases earlier, all that was there. Is it, 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 it's not that uh, diversity suddenly became something people had to focus on in 2016. And the focus that has been on it throughout all the noise and the shouting and everything that's, that's come with it around the, the accusations that the fans would never accept it. I'm sorry, you're late to the party. The fans accepted this 20 odd years ago. Literally a generation ago, the, the fans accepted this. The customers accepted this. What we're getting now is, is worse. It's, it's less representation. And again, I, CBR is correct. It is, uh, it, it, this is, you know, they introduce these characters, they do a cover, they put the pride flag on there, lots of hugging. And then, um, you know, and then these characters promptly disappear. Hulkling and Wiccan were characters that had the potential within Marvel to have the same kind of uh, cult following and, and, and excitement as Midnight and Apollo. They didn't do that because they never bothered to get to the adventure part. They were too busy uh, calling people from 20 odd years ago, you know, homophobes and the customers bigots and, uh, you know, and, 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 and counting how many, how many characters on the team were gay versus not gay. Look, um, I, I think the comic industry should do a victory lap, a long overdue victory lap of some of the great diversity representation that they accomplished 30 to 40 years ago now.
in comics, 80s and 90s. And I think they should just just stop with this weird battle they've created themselves against fans who are frankly more accepting of the better writing. And 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 last last but not least, I'm sorry, they need to get better writers. The writers they have now, it, it, they're not actually doing the, the job they claim to do. They're, they're making it more trivial, less interesting, less exciting. And if the goal is to do more for, for diversity, they're failing miserably at it. Because quite bluntly, they're, they're just not skilled enough to carry it off. Now, that's not saying all the writers. I'm just saying a lot of the prominent ones at Marvel and DC do not have the kind of skills that uh, a Milligan or a Morrison or a Pollock or, you know, again, over and over and over. They, they don't have those skills. Lots of writers on the indie scene do. And maybe it's time for some of the people who have been trying and miserably failing at this to step aside. And if this is the goal, bring in some people who actually know how to bring in diversity to the comic and, and not have it become one-dimensional, completely paper-thin characters. Just a suggestion. Anyway, um, yeah, just these writers aren't that good. Thanks for listening.